Live right here on this Thursday on the early line on Sports Grid. He is Donnie. I am Ben. So there are already odds implications from what we saw yesterday, the blockbuster deal around the National Football League. Stephon Diggs dealt by Buffalo now with Houston. The overall odds optimism for the Texans that we'll look at in just a couple of minutes with our guy Joe Lisi, but also what it means for the Buffalo Bills. And when you look at the AFC East, even last year, DRS, when the New York Jets added Aaron Rodgers and the Miami Dolphins made their moves to the support to a tongue of Iloa, everybody was looking up at Buffalo. And that's still the case at this moment entering the 2024 NFL season. But Buffalo has been dominant in this division. Let's not mince words. The Bills have won the AFC East crown four straight years. Think about the dominance this division has seen over the last 25 NFL seasons. First, it was Tom Brady and the Patriots. They were always going to win the division in the AFC East. And now Buffalo has gone on a streak of four straight seasons with a divisional crown. The Bills are still the favorites at plus 160. But after the Diggs deal... The Dolphins only 10 cents behind the Jets less than a buck back at plus 240. I don't know what to make of this, Ben. And the reason why I'm getting yeah. confused now is I'm with most of the people in the offseason. I just said, like, but when the season ended, yeah, Buffalo's still the best team here. Let's see if they can add on. Now, we saw them have some issues here going through some salary structures where it's like, you know what? We're way over the cap. we got to get below. We're going to release veteran players. But you still had the basis of a great football team, which means you have the best quarterback still in that division, and that's Josh Allen. But i got to tell you right now, Miami hemorrhaged throughout the offseason here trying to get under the salary cap. They're not a better football team. Neither are the Buffalo Bills. The one team that I was already counting out for the next season was the New York Jets. I didn't care who they're adding on defense. You know, the offensive line, we'll see if it can gel, adding a, a couple new faces there. But Aaron Rodgers, another year older. We know all the drama around him and also getting some wide receivers in town. The talent is there for the Jets, but I wrote him off because I can't trust him. Now, all of a sudden, I find myself today, Ben, looking at the New York Jets going like, you know what? There might be value on the Jets because now I'm going to take a look at the rosy side of the picture for the Jets. Aaron Rodgers, all for a year, completely healthy, entering into training camp, knows the offense fully Mm. well. The team's defense actually got better than what it was last year. And now you take a step and you're going to add more pieces throughout the draft to help out Aaron Rodgers. That plus 240 price is screaming when before I wanted nothing to do with it because I thought the Buffalo Bills were by far the best team in this division. Now, the FanDuel Sportsbook band is still telling us the Buffalo Bills are going to be a good football team. And you will be since you have Josh Allen. And as you stated, they have a pedigree the past couple years. They are the kings of this division, but they're coming right back to the pack now where it's a de facto coin flip for me. Who's the best team? Is it Buffalo? Is it Miami? Is it the New York Jets here? I don't know right now, but I will tell you this. We're not starting the season in the next week or two here. The draft is coming up. Trades will be done. New players will be on the team. If the Buffalo Bills go out and again, get T Higgins, let's just say, to replace Stephon Diggs, I'm back in on the Buffalo Bills. And I can't think to myself that they'll be dumb enough to say, yeah, we removed Diggs. Let's just get after it this year with the team we have and see if we can win a championship. You're doing your all-star quarterback a disservice at that point here. Let me wait it out for the Buffalo Bills. But my whole synopsis now on the East Bend, the Jets are now live for me. So I still have no belief in the New York Jets, a team that hasn't reached the postseason in 13 years. I don't really trust a quarterback who will be 40 years old by the time next season starts coming off a torn Achilles. Mm -hmm. I don't care how talented the team is around Gang Green until they prove it. I'm not going to bet it. The Dolphins seemingly have taken a step back, which I don't really understand. Yes, they lose Vic Fangio. They lose a couple of key pieces defensively but that wasn't what made Miami great a season ago just because they were super banged up into the wild card round against Kansas City and played in one of the coldest football games the world has ever known all of a sudden they don't have what it takes to win a division to go deep into the postseason all right maybe you don't bet them to win the AFC championship I still expect Miami to be a playoff team I think the question though really is Donnie Do we expect the Buffalo Bills to be at the level and have that ceiling of success we have seen the last few seasons? Yes, that ceiling has a shelf life in the playoffs, bounced in the division around in the last three years, four straight divisional championships, but never an AFC title or a Super Bowl appearance. Do you still expect, although there is value in other spots, when all is said and done, come January of 2025, into the 18th week of the NFL season in 2024, the Buffalo Bills will be the divisional champs in the AFC East. 
I don't know, but I do think they're a playoff team. As constructed right now, okay. again, as long as you have Josh Allen, they still have some competent points around them on offense and defense. They still should be able to get it done. But I'm going to reserve my judgment to see if they can still be the kings of the East if they add a wide receiver. Again, things are going to shake loose. They're going to restructure contracts. Other players on teams will be unhappy with some of their guys. Hey, look, maybe I can sweep in and steal a number one wide receiver or get another running back or just get something that's going to help my team. We always see those cuts come late in August. Like, hey, this guy is now available. Can they happen? I thought the Buffalo Bills were still the best team heading into the offseason, even if they shook it up. And I wasn't even worried all that much, Ben, about the Buffalo Bills when they still had Stephon Diggs. Now, this move again, because it didn't come with, hey, Diggs is on the move, but we have a transaction in place to get Devontae Adams. He's going to be our number one, and it's no big deal. And again, that compensation this year is big. You have a very good draft with a lot of talented players that if you lose Diggs, you can package that second round pick and move up with your first round pick and get a legitimate wide receiver. And maybe they do that anyway. That's why I am going to reserve judgment on the Bills, but I just don't like the direction of the entire East right now when the New York Jets is a team that I know you can't trust, and I technically don't, but now I'm starting to trust them. Why? Because I don't know if I trust the Dolphins and or the Bills now the way they're constructed as football teams. And that is a really interesting thing about what Buffalo has done this offseason. They've let go of a lot of guys that you have known defensively and on the offensive side of the football in these four consecutive years where the Bills have won the division. Is it a completely different structured Buffalo team? Will they invest in a wide receiver? Again, minus 240 for the Bills to select a wide receiver with their first pick of the 2024 NFL Draft. That is 28th overall in the opening round, exactly three weeks from tonight in Detroit. Will they move up to try to be in the top 10, top 15 to maybe go after a Roma Dunze, who is probably the third best wideout in this class behind Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors? Could Brian Thomas Jr. be in consideration? The other big play wideout from LSU. That seems to be a prerogative and a priority now. It's a different thought, right? You talk about wide receivers that are aging, what is value. If you can get wideouts in the first round on a rookie deal, you can invest in other areas, which may be what Brandon Bean is trying to do. We didn't really talk about the dead cap hit, by the way, that Buffalo still has to take for Stephon Diggs. They really wanted him out of Western New York. I'm not a believer in the New York Jets, but look at the win totals here, DRS. Ten and a half for the Buffalo Bills, nine and a half for Miami, nine and a half for New York, five and a half for New England. The Patriots at the bottom of this division, we expect that to be the case at least in 2024. But you could have, much like we thought last year, three teams in contention for three playoff spots. One divisional champ who earns, of course, that home playoff game in the NFL postseason in two of these teams, the RS, in the AFC East, that we expect to be in contention for wildcard spots as well. Yeah, and also, we take a look, and we live in the moment a lot of the times, and rightfully so. We're in the content business. You're going to react immediately to what happens when Stephon Diggs goes to Houston. We love the move for Houston here on the outset, but what does that mean for the Buffalo Bills? Don't just fall off the map here as a bad football team. I understand they had to cut some weight loose last offseason here that, quite frankly, didn't help them all that much last year anyway. But now as you look forward, you know there's another move for them. So if I told you right now, hey, in two weeks, T. Higgins is going to be a wide receiver on the Buffalo Bills, you're feeling really good about the Buffalo Bills again. There's no doubt in my mind, the way you look at it right now, Shakir, Samuel, and Hollins, that's not going to be the starting wide receiver trio next year for the Buffalo Bills. It might be a buy on price right now for the Bills if you expect their GM to make a move, as I do. Yeah, it's a really good point as well. Plus 160, the number for Buffalo. Last year, with all the odds optimism for the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins, that preseason price around a plus 120, plus 130 number. Look at the two divisions that we expect the most out of in the AFC. Everybody in the AFC North, all four teams thought to be a playoff contender of some sort in the National Football League this year, at least three of the four in the AFC East.